Good evening and welcome to Access Iowa City, a program about the disability and independent move, living movements in southeastern Iowa. Access Iowa City is brought to you by a generous donation from the Noon Pilots Club of Johnson County in collaborations between the Extended Dream Foundation, Access to Independence, and the Center for Disabilities and Development, as well as all the hardworking folks here at Public Access Television Channel 18. I'm Terry Cunningham, President of the Board of Directors of Access to Independence, Vice Chair of the Johnson County Mental Health Disability Services Planning Council, and an individual who's lived with a significant disability for over 41 years. Tonight we're happy to have the folks from REM here to talk about REM programs in general, but specifically about the host home program. We have Monica and Denise with us here tonight, and as always, my co-host, Keith Ruff. Thank you, Jerry. You're welcome. Well, Monica, why don't, we, why don't we start out with you and kind of give us an overview of what REM Iowa is, and then we'll go into more detail on the sp specific host home program that we're talking about. Great. Rama Iowa is a provider here in the state of Iowa. We provide residential and day vocational programs for individuals with disabilities. Uh, that includes in intellectual disabilities, developmental disabilities, brain injury, and mental illness. Uh, REM Iowa stands for Robert E. Miller. He was the founder of our organization over 30 years ago. And since then, we have um, merged with the National Mentor Network. Um, the National Mentor Network is the one that pioneered host home programs over 30 years. And since then, they have host home programs in over 13 states, supporting over, I believe it's 1,400 adults with disabilities in the host home program. So the host home program is a very unique uh, living environment um, here in the state of Iowa where an individual and a community member choose to uh, live with each other. The community member is approved by our agency and they become a mentor. Uh, the mentor is not only the individual's mentor, but their primary caretaker, a friend, an advocate, um, and just someone that's really there to support them um, with accomplishing all the dreams and goals that that individual has. As far as locations around Iowa and number of folks you serve and, and your programs, What's that? Yeah, this program is very new. Um, it just got started a couple months ago. We are currently serving three individuals in the host home program, living in three separate host homes. Primarily doing that in the Lynn County area right now. We definitely are open to expand that to other communities across the state that are in need and interested in a host home program. Okay. With the other services, what, where all in Iowa do you serve? Oh, they're across the board in Iowa. We have programs as far west as Council Bluffs, and then we kind of stay on the interstate to, I don't know if I'll get them in order, but Council Bluffs, Shelby, Adel, Atlantic, Avoca, um, the Des Moines area. Then we skip over to Iowa City, Corville area, um, Cedar Rapids, Hiawatha, Marion, Vinton, Mount Vernon, Tipton, Davenport, and then down south into Keokuk, Mount Pleasant, and Fort Madison. Hopefully I hit them all. <laughs> I feel like I had a test. <laughs> but um, definitely across the state. Um, the other services that we offer in those areas could be a day program or a pre-vocational program. It could be in an intermediate care facility, uh, or it could be a supported community living setting. Monica, is there any age limit on the consumer who join the program? Uh, for Meaning how young can they be? Yep, for um, the REM Iowa services, the ICF programs, the yeah. intermediate care programs, we do have um, a children's program in Council Bluff, so we do serve children there. In the supported community living programs, um, we are able to serve children in that environment. Um, with the day program, it's typically not children, it's more um, adult age. And then for host home, we are able to support individuals age 16 years of age on up. 
And how many people total do you serve then, not in the host home, but in the rest of your programming? I would say around 400 across the state. Okay. With the host home specifically, how does somebody begin to, to get involved and where can they find out information about it? For someone that wants to be supported in a host home or for someone that wants to be the mentor? I guess either way. Okay. Well, if an individual um, is interested in being supported in the host home program, um, the first step would be obviously to talk to their team, you know, their family, their friends, their case manager. Um, any of those parties can give me a call. And um, I just would like to meet with the individual and their family and team and really talk to them more about the host home program because it is so unique and so new in the state of Iowa. It's important that the individual and the family really understand what the program is and what the program isn't. Um, what I like to share with individuals, especially if they've lived either in a home environment with parents or they lived in a group home, is really let them know that the two main differences between living in their home and a group home versus a host home would be the environment and who's providing the care. Um, most of our host homes are, are family homes um, where it might be with a single mentor um, or they could have their family in the home, they're typically not gonna be living with other peers with a disability. The other main difference is the caretaking in a group home environment. Um, the individual's typically supported by a number of different staff on a rotating basis. Um, if that works well for people, that's great. If the individual likes more of that consistency from a primary caretaker, then the host home might be a better option for them. So um, definitely talk with the individual, kind of find out what their strengths are, what supports they need. Uh, really make sure that we feel that REM Iowa is a good provider for them, that we can help them out, and then that the host home program um, might be a good match for them. Um, and then we just wait for that perfect match for that perfect mentor to come along. As far as a community member that may be interested in being a mentor, um, their first step, and I think sometimes the hardest step, is just to pick up the phone and call me and just um, ask me more about the program. Um, on the phone, I usually give them a little bit of information about the program as well as making sure they can meet five basic re requirements. Um, we do require mentors are age 21 years of older. Um, we do do the background checks, including driver's records. Um, they need to have access to reliable transportation. Um, we do want the individual to have their own bedroom sp space. And then the biggest one is just a commitment and desire to really want to help someone else out um, and bring them into the home, as well as knowing that they're going to get so much from that individual also. Um, if they think that they're interested, they can meet those requirements, we schedule an informational meeting, which takes about an hour. Um, we get together and, and talk a lot more about what the host home program is and isn't, um, what it um, entails to be a mentor. If after that meeting um, they're interested in pursuing, there is an application in the background checks that I give to them, um, and a self-readiness assessment. The readiness assessment, assessment is a really good tool for the community member to take back with them, with their and their family, and kind of go through it and see, is this really something that um, we're interested in and we feel like we can do at this point? Once they complete that, they get it to me, and if, if we're interested, we pursue to the next step, which is a home visit, and then we go through what's called the whole pipeline of uh, selection process with the mentor. What is the process of getting the information out to communities that don't have the program? That don't have the what? Program that don't have the program. Yes. Um, hopefully, you know, we've gone to a lot of different counties to talk to a lot of different case managers and CPCs about the program. Um, we also have tried to educate the community. Um, sometimes we do that through newspaper ads. Sometimes we do that through informational meetings. Um, we also have um, two websites that people can access. The first one is remiowa.com. And the second one, if, if people are interested in becoming a mentor, would be makeadifferenceathome.com. Um, folks can also always call me at the office, which is 319-393-1944, extension 58, and ask for myself, and I can kind of take them through more of the information in the process. 
approximately what's the time frame or the, the scrutiny that people go through. Mm -hmm. you know, can you describe some of that and you know, if, if there's as a specific programs or it, you know, is it a, a ten, 10 chapter mm -hmm. book that <laughs> you go through or you know, what? Yeah, so after they do the application and we do the background checks and we want to uh, move to the next step and so does the um, applicant, we call them a prospect at that point, um, I will schedule a time to go out to their home and just do what's called a home visit. I want to meet the other folks that live in the home, I want to meet pets that live in the home and just get a tour of their home and the layout um, and looking for health and safety type um, concerns that you know obviously are, are fixable. Um, after that, then um, we do do an interview. We, do, we interview all the adults in the home. We do um, talk with the children in the home, and we do do an interview with the adult children that no longer in the home. We get professional and per personal references. There's a medical clearance that the mentor has to pass. It's, it's a pretty um, basic medical cl clearance, and I think most people will pass that. Um, and then after that, there is um, some pre-service training we require. We do require all of our mentors have a current CPR certification. We require them go through the medication manager class, which that's about a 12-hour course, so it is a little lengthy, as well as dependent or child abuse class, which um, they can take online with us, and that's a two-hour class. And then outside of that, there's about 12 to 15 hours of pre-service orientation that Denise and I provide. Um, and that covers a variety of different topics from REM history to stress management, um, documentation. Um, uh, what it means to be a mentor. Yeah, individual rights, just a variety of hodgepodge topics that we feel it's important that um, prospects get before they decide to become a mentor. Um, it's really hard to put a time frame on that because it really depends on how quickly mentor prospects are getting us information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some folks can get through the process and be approved mentor within six to eight weeks. Um, some mentors, it might take them several months, um, and that's okay because it is a big commitment on their part, and so we want to make sure that they feel very comfortable with the process. Mm -hmm. Well, and it certainly sounds like that. You know, this this is not something that somebody's going to go into lightly and kind of be able to to skate through and have any surprises happen along yes. the way, which is is certainly the way it should be. It, during the family interview process, I guess I would imagine that the families discussed it and pretty much are are all on the same page. Have, have you had opportunities where you, you get to that point and suddenly one or two members of the family decide, no, I don't think this really is, mm -hmm. is what I want, and you know, if so, does, is that uh, an automatic disqualifier for a family? Because we're so new, I haven't ran into that yet, and I, um, I'm sure I will, though, in the future. What I have run into is um, more of the children. Once I sit down and talk with them, and, and um, they have a lot of questions that maybe their parents couldn't answer, or the children chose not to ask their parents. Um, not so much concerns that they don't want an adult to come into the family home, but more just questions. You know, um, am I still going to get enough time with my mommy and daddy? Um, or what, what if I don't don't want them to come into my bedroom or mm -hmm. if I have friends have a sleepover does the individual have to participate in that sleepover so more of that kind of um, education and reassurance um, we have I have had some experience where adult children are very concerned um, about their parents doing this program um, and again usually it's because they just don't have enough knowledge or um, education about the program because it is so new so usually when I talk to um, the adult children um, they usually do um, get more comfortable with the program and the process, but there's some, st there are still some children that you know wonder what what is this really going to be and what kind of support 
are my parents going to have mm -hmm. if the individual does require a lot of hands-on assistance or um, does have some behavioral episodes? Um, if an adult child isn't 100% on board with their parents becoming mentors, that's something we definitely take into account, but that doesn't automatically disqualify them at all. Okay. Denise, what are your specific duties? Uh, okay, um, I'm the program coordinator, so my specific duties are um, making sure to go out into the home okay. and make sure the mentors are comfortable as well as the individuals, um, overseeing the documentation, making sure that um, the individuals are getting their medication when they're supposed to, um, making sure that the um, goals and action steps are met um, by the mentor and the individual. Um, I'm fairly new, so I'm learning my position um, rather quickly. Um, I'm also responsible for um, home safety, making sure that um, the individuals and mentors are practicing monthly fire drills and quarterly um, tornado drills. And I think that's about all I've done up to this point. Yeah, Denise assists a lot with, a lot with the cord, um, care coordination uh, between the mentor and that individual and just really making sure that everything is, is going um, good in the home and that it, it continues to be a safe environment for all parties in the home. It's more of a collaboration between um, myself, Monica, and the mentor. Um, just being a sounding board or a support system for um, the individual and the mentor within the home environment. Monica, how, how are the major state agencies reacting to this program? I think um, cautiously, um, definitely we have had the opportunity to get in front of a lot of um, different you know, counties, um, case managers, CPCs, um, through different advocacy boards. Um, we have shared this program with um, IME at an Iowa Medicaid Enterprise. Um, I think that everyone's really excited about the program because it does give individuals um, another choice for residential services. Um, I think that there is um, some caution just because this is such a new concept here in the state of Iowa. What's interesting is that um, host homes have been done in many different states across the nation for over 30 years ago. So I think here in the state of Iowa, um, you know, people really want to watch and see how REM Iowa is doing host home in the state of Iowa and can we do this with quality and can we be successful uh, for the individual and for the mentor and their family. But definitely very um, excited and receptive to it. Um, but I think just, you know, we, we have to prove ourselves that this is yeah. a good program and that um, we are going to uh, contract with um, the best community members um, and that we can do this with, with quality because that's very important. Okay. Now, it, is this a 24 7, 365 day a year commitment people are making or is is there some kind of relief built into the program so that uh, you know the younger kids get that parental attention that that they need and want Yes, it, um, all of our individuals in host home do require support or um, assistance 24-7, um, 365. Um, however, it is very important that our, the individual as well as the mentors um, have you know, a break or have a relief from one another. Um, our primary mentors can choose to use another mentor. Um, they can choose to substitute with a substitute mentor. Um, and we do go into communities and prove other, approve other agencies. Um, for example, here in Lynn County, we have worked with and approved the ARC as well as Camp Courageous. So our mentors can choose to use relief through ARC or Camp Courageous um, if they don't want to use one of our, our mentors. Um, and some of our individuals, we still want them to continue those um, family and friend contacts. So our individuals definitely can still um, go home to their um, parental home or to a sibling's home, um, you know, and kind of hang out and, and that kind of gives them a relief too. Okay. And I'm sure folks are, are wondering about now, is this program 
one that, you know, somebody takes in an individual to their home out of the goodness of their heart and assumes the expenses of raising another person or is there compensation involved with yep, it? Yep, it definitely is not volunteer. There is compensation. Uh, our mentors do receive a stipend, um, so a daily um, rate for supporting that individual in their home. They also do receive room and board assistance on a monthly basis from the individual. Um, our mentors never have to assume the um, medical or health costs for the individual. All of our individuals typically have medical or health insurance to cover that. Okay, and what what amounts are those, or what what um, range? The siphon, you know, it, there's a range, you know, anywhere from thirty four thousand dollars annually on up. Um, the room and board is also a range that could be anywhere between four to six hundred dollars a month um, for the room and board. Uh, it really just depends on the needs of the individual. Okay. Monica, yeah. how often do you recommend? Then the organism take a break and go home or just do any, anything but the regular routine. Um, yeah, some of our, again, because we've only been doing this for a couple months, some of our mentors and individuals haven't used a lot of um, okay. relief or substitute um, mentor yet, just because they really want that individual to be part of their family yeah. unit. Um, but it is something that we really, you know, encourage um, because I think it is a good, you know, just it, wh whoever you live with, whether it's, you know, peers or friends or family members, you know, it is good to get a break um, from others. So it's just something we continue to talk to mentors and individuals about. Um, all of our individuals right now, they do go to a day programming or a job during the day. So that mentor does kind of have a break from, you know, nine to yeah. three o'clock in the afternoon um, so yeah it, you know it's a hard one it's something that we we encourage um, some mentors really don't want the individual to miss out on some of the things that they're doing or vice versa and that was going to be my next question about is the person at home all the time or mm -hmm. are there day programs so that folks could potentially work away from the home or you know, would have that time as as their time and to to do things either by themselves yeah. or you know, with other friends or whatever. And that's what's so exciting about the host home program is because it is so flexible and it's so individualized based on um, the wants and desires and supports of that individual. So we absolutely can support individuals that want to be home all the time, um, you know, that choose not to work or that want to retire. We can support individuals that are still going to school, that go to, you know, a day program or a pre-vocational um, program. Um, the nice thing about having, you know, one or two mentors within the home, that's the individual's primary, primary caretaker, is they can provide very consistent, individu individualized quality support to that individual. Um, so it's very, very flexible um, to meet whatever needs the individual um, has. Mm -hmm. For, and I guess it's, because it's so new, I guess it's kind of hard to imagine what you know what, what affects long term that children in the family having exposure to someone with a disability how much that's going to open their awareness and understanding of folks with disabilities and and what they can and can't do or what friends of the individuals or, or family members do because I'm sure it's not going to be, you know, a preaching process. Right. You know, I've got 20-some nieces and nephews and great nieces and nephews and whatever. None of them know me any other way than, right. than being in a wheelchair. Yet, they've picked up so many things just by being around. You know, I did it never preached accessibility or, or that kind of stuff, yet because I was out and about in the community with them, they all knew that in order for me to get in, 
different buildings, I had to use the funny sidewalk that was at an angle, or I had to use the doors that open when you got close to them, or you know, one where you pushed a button and they knew that I had to park in spots that had the little blue and white sign on it. And once they got older and had different activities and programs that they would want me to go to, they could tell me which side of the building and which door and which hallway that I had to go down to be able to get to wherever it was. Okay. Uh, and uh, they also thought that I must know everybody else in a, in a wheelchair in the world, <laughs> which tended to drive their mothers crazy at mall because they'd see somebody else in a wheelchair and would go racing off to talk to them. And by the time my sisters would get there, there'd be, th be this poor person who had no idea what was going on, but I'd have a niece or nephew jabbering to them about, you know, they said, well, I have no idea what they're saying. I just keep recognizing the, world, the words Uncle Terry. Yeah. You know, so, and it just amazed me how many things they picked up and how much because of that, when they were around other kids mm -hmm. that had a disability, they didn't think twice about it. Yep. You know, okay, you know, that's it, big deal. Mm -hmm. And a couple of my nieces have since gone on and, and are uh, supports for kids in the school system. And you know, it just, it, as Keith and I always say about the whole you know, awareness and understanding thing, it's just a lack of experience. Mm -hmm. It's a lack of understanding and you know, you guys certainly probably preach that to stuff to, to people. It's just a matter of knowing mm -hmm. folks with disabilities. I Monica, not, not only the sibling in the family, how the, how does the progress of the adult hope make? when they get a disabled person, how much, how long does it take before they feel comfortable? Yeah, I think that's, um, it's very individualized. Okay. Uh, what's really neat about the program, again, is, um, you know, and some of the other services that are offered in the community is the individual that is wanting support from a primary caregiver doesn't really get to interview the, the staff, for example. Okay. And so in the host home program, the individual gets to meet with who we think might be a good match with them um, many, many times before either party decides that they think okay. they're a good match. And not only do they get to meet the mentor, but they also get to meet the mentor's immediate family, possibly the mentor's extended family, pets, um, friends, uh, folks in the neighborhood. And so it's really exciting to see individuals go out and interview the caregiver and interview the kids and interview um, you know, family members to, to really see if this is an environment they want to live in. Yeah, and isn't that actually the the way it should be, yeah. period. You know, that, that folks should have some say in where they're gonna live, who they're yeah. gonna live with, what they're gonna do. Yeah. Well, we've pretty much <laughs> used up our time for, for this evening. I really wanna thank you for coming in and you. sharing with us what I think is, is one of the most fascinating programs I've heard about in years, and certainly hope that you have nothing to but success with it and continue to, to move folks out. And you know, as we talked about earlier, we'd certainly like to make this an annual, an annual show and bring more folks in who are using the program and, and hear the update of, of how things are going. Absolutely, but thank you yes. so much. Thank, thank you. you much. Thanks everybody at home. We'll see you again next week. Thank Thanks, you. Keith. Bye now.